This is the Michael K. Show podcast. Listen live weekday afternoon starting at 3 on 98.7 ESPN in New York. The ESPN app, the TuneIn app, or on your smart speaker. Hey, Alexa, play 98.7 ESPN. I was so swayed by um, Seth Wickersham's excellent book, Better to Be Feared, the book about the Patriots and, you know, the Belichick and Brady years. And just Brady's obsession with football. I couldn't see him walking away. So when this happened, I, I texted Andrew. I said, let's try to get Seth on tomorrow. And here he is, here he is. the author of the book, Better to Be Feared. Such a great book. Seth, um, Michael, Don, and Peter here. Were you surprised when he came back? Hey, guys. Um Man, it's hard to say that I was surprised because Tom Brady himself, um, you know, a week into his retirement, started talking about the possibility of coming back. So it was clear that he was torn from the beginning, and that's okay. He's a human. But um, I am surprised that he came back to the team that he retired from, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and what changed over the last 41 days. And the only thing, I, and again, it's just complete speculation, Seth, on my part, but it feels like for a guy that almost won the MVP, for a guy that said he wanted to play till he was 45, I don't think he was on board with his own retirement. Now, whether it was Giselle, whether it was the family, whether it was some outside pressure, am I wrong to speculate that retiring was something he never really wanted to do in the first place? I think it was him. Like, I, you know, I, I think that obviously his wife has been very public in her desire for him to walk away, but I, I have not been told by anybody that she was insistent that he retire or, or wanting him to retire. I think that he was tired of football and tired of playing for the Bucks. He found more, or at least seemed to find a lot more fulfillment in the off field stuff than maybe he anticipated um, last fall. And, you know, with about a month left in the season, word started to leak out around Brady's camp. This was probably it. And then the day, either the day or the weekend that they played the, um, their first playoff game, uh, Jeff Darlington and Adam Schefter, my, my, my colleagues, reported that he was noncommittal about returning to the Bucks, And then they lose to the Rams. Complete disaster on defense in a way that, you know, I think that maybe Brady had feared the Bucks weren't as buttoned up as they should have been. And they go and lose a game that they probably would have won in overtime to the Los Angeles Rams in the final seconds. And then, you know, when he walked away, I think he was tired. And I think he was ready to try something else. And obviously that didn't last very long. Again, I do think that, like, look, he he left New England and went to Tampa for a reason. He wanted something different. And I think that there's a reason why Bill Belichick is, you know, undisputably the greatest coach in modern football history and also can be cold and emotionless. And Bruce Arians is a very good coach and is a great guy that everybody likes to be around. But the Patriot way is, is buttoned up, and the Bucks just weren't as buttoned up as the brand of football that Tom Brady was used to. Like I said, they go and lose a playoff game where they screw up a blitz with 27 seconds left and, you know, cost them the game, the game basically. And I think that he was looking – I think he thought that was it, and then obviously immediately started doubting that. But you wonder, again, why he came back to the Bucks, and I think that the job that – GM Jason Light, head coach Bruce Arians, you know, must have done in the past couple weeks convincing him to come back and convincing that they would have a chance to win the Super Bowl coming back is, is really kind of the story here. Now, Seth, Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk is coming out and saying he's not, he's not going to play for the Bucs, even though in, the, in the, you know, the statement that he had on Instagram, he said, I'm coming home, I love my teammates. But Florio seems to think that he's going to force a trade somewhere. Do you buy that? Uh. I mean, Mike's got great sources. I, I don't believe that. I mean, he's already gotten some Bucks players to either re-sign with the Bucks and free agents or reconsider signing there. I think that, you know, Bruce Arians just came out two weeks ago and said they were not going to let Tom Brady play for another team because it would be bad for business. And then you do wonder where. And, you know, I know that there's been a lot of smoke and there is legit. there was legit smoke about Brady possibly – trying to come back and play for the 49ers, but it was always going to be difficult. And I think that this makes it almost impossible. And the reasons why it was going to be difficult, I think, was number one, because the Bucs weren't going to give him away. Number two, because Brady never came out and quite said that that's what he wanted to, to happen. 
third, the 49ers don't have a lot of capital to work with. They traded a ton to draft Trey Lance last year. And fourth, you know, was Brady really going to move his family across the country second move in three years? I just, I think there was just too many headwinds for him to end up in San Francisco. And, you know, I think that at least for the next year, I think he's going to be a Tampa Bay Buck. You know, it's interesting because, you know, if, if you look back last week, Seth, you say, boy, this NFC is wide open. But now you look, <laughs> as Tampa's trying to, exp- you know, say, come back to us, we can win in the Super Bowl, that the Saints might emerge as the front runner for Watson. And that, you know, that's another thing that's interesting to me is that at the Combine, the Bucks were interested in Watson. I mean, they certainly, as, as Jason might said, were keeping the light on for Brady to come back. But they were – you know, asking about Deshaun Watson and, you know, thinking about him as being their quarterback next year. Um, I think to me it shows just how good of a job they did at convincing Brady to, to come back and that, you know, again, they'd have a chance to win with him coming back. And, yeah, like you said, the NFC is, you know, especially with Deshaun Watson possibly a saint, um, you know, everything is going to be harder this year. The Bucks team right now that Tom Brady is returning to is not as good as the Bucks team that he walked away from, you know, 40-some days ago. And, you know, obviously there's a lot that, you know, can be done between now and the end of next season, and they can keep improving. But you're right. It, everything is more difficult. But at the end of the day, I think that Brady became, you know, like Magic Johnson, like Michael Jordan, someone who – really struggled to find fulfillment away from the game, even in, you know, barely a month, you know, a little bit more than a month away from it. ESPN senior writer Seth Wickersham, uh, the author of Better Be Feared, the the book about the Patriots, Belichick, Brady years. Before I let you go, the the reason I never thought he was done, Seth, um, I mean, I read the book about two months ago, but it it still is seared in my head. Everything this guy lived and breathed for, was football. Everything was put into football. Mm-hmm. And then I could see Seth if he retired because he was on the downside and he didn't play as well and he'd be embarrassed. He finished on top. His last pass was a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And that's why it struck mm-hmm. me. And I don't think he's coming back for one year, Seth. I think he's coming back for multiple years. It could be. I mean, I think that, like, you know, one of the things I wrote about in the book was when he was 27 years old, he did a, an interview with 60 Minutes. And the most revealing part of the interview got no attention. And that's when Steve Cross asked Tom Brady, you know, back then he was the underdog Tom Brady, right? He wasn't even what he is now. But he asked him, you know, what scares you? What are you really fearful of? And without a, a without missing a beat, he said, the end of my playing career. And I think that we often underestimate, you know, just, how basic these things are so basic as to be overlooked love for the game and fear of life without it. And I think that that's, you know, where Tom Brady is. I think that he needs football more than football needs him. Well, you got a, you know, you got a sequel to the book, Seth. Just yes. keep following him around. <laughs> Thanks man. <laughs> I got to get to work. <laughs> Thanks Seth. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you guys. All right. ESPN senior writer, Thanks. Seth Wickersham. It's, it's fascinating. It really is. It, and, to lose something that you're so attached to that is really part of your breathing and say, okay, that's it. And they always say that athletes die two deaths. And I, I could see it. I mean, Brady was probably lost. He was, but his, the thing that centered him was football all the time. All of a sudden it wasn't there anymore. And he's got a family, he's got business obligations and things like that. He could go on TV and command any price, but but that's his center and it's taken away. It's hard. But here's the thing, guys. He knew that. Even that 60 Minutes interview when he was 26, he feared the end of his career. Said he wanted to play till he was 45. Every indication was this guy wanted to play. I just cannot believe that it was his conscious decision alone to say, I am going to retire. And then 40 days later, unretire. He never wanted to retire in the first place. He wanted to keep playing. Most of the time when athletes come back, they have no idea how they're going to feel after they retire. They just retire because they're supposed to retire. It's the right age. It's the right time for them at the time. And then they look back a year later and go, oh, my God, I miss it too much. I got to go back. He knew he was going to miss it. He Everything that he feared that he went through those 40 days, he had to know was going to happen. Because I never, I never heard of an athlete, Michael, that was more afraid of his career ending than Tom Brady. 
So how could it have just been his decision to just out of nowhere after a tough loss to the Rams? Yeah, it's, it, it didn't make sense now, and him coming back makes more sense than him walking away. We'll come back. Um, Eric Adams, the new mayor of New York, uh, has somebody else putting pressure on him. Big name, too. We'll talk about it when we get back right here on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. Thanks for listening to the Michael K. Show podcast. Hear more of Michael, Don, and Peter live weekday afternoon starting at 3 on 98.7 ESPN in New York. The ESPN app, the TuneIn app, or on your smart speaker. Hey, Alexa, play 98.7 ESPN.